Welcome back to our community. Susie Thomas visiting with Corey Easterday from Current Initiatives and uh, talking about affordable Christmas. Corey, there are so many great things going on this time of year. How does this differ from Community Christmas or Love the Children or some of the other organizations that are collecting gifts to make sure that everybody has a Merry Christmas this year? Well, you know, one of the funny things is we actually owe it to organizations like Love the Children that were able to exist because they've been very supportive in that we all have the same effort, ultimately, of wanting to help families uh, and wanting to see them kind of take next steps and, and experience that hope and that love. Uh, and so I'd say the biggest difference uh, of affordable Christmas in general is that we have the families uh, come and actually pay for the gifts. So they are putting forth uh, a financial uh, piece with paying for the gifts being one-tenth of the cost. And we set it up intentionally like that because one of the things that even just looking back on my own experience that was the most helpful is when there were places where I realized I bring something to the table. And I think that a lot of times uh, charity work can be set up as uh, we want to give everything away to the families. And I think it comes from an amazing place of generosity and compassion and all sorts of values that I would absolutely affirm uh, in anybody. And for me, it was realizing how can we take it a step further? How can the families have buy-in? How can they feel like uh, you know, I, I have a piece of ownership here. Uh, you know, all the money that goes into the store goes back into our nonprofit that goes into our other initiatives like the Laundry Project. So we wow. really look at it as even families are helping to support initiatives uh, going on in their own community to help people in the community. So, uh, you know, and the Laundry Project that we do is free. You know, we do a free wash and dry for families. Uh, and I could I could explain more about that initiative. But, yeah, we will. Uh, you know, even at something that's free, I'm constantly looking for ways uh, for families to have buy-in because I just think community is where uh, at its best is when everybody uh, realizes that they have a part, they play a part in the community, they matter, they're important, they bring something to the table, and that we need all of that from everybody. Um, and, and like I said, largely it just comes from my own experience where mm -hmm. people said, hey, uh, you're not just some poor kid from a broken family situation but you have potential uh you matter you and and we want to we want to bring that out in you and and to me it's just the dignity of all of us right now uh not all but most of us we can go to kmart we can go to target whatever just go shop for gifts uh i actually think and it might sound crazy that getting that same shopping experience for all of its flaws uh is very dignifying so I love the word dignity because there is something about parenthood for a man to feel like he is providing for his family, for a woman to as to be the mother, to be able to go and buy something for their children that they're giving. That it, this wasn't a, something that someone guessed what you might want or we went to some kind of a pile and picked the, the things that were closest. But we chose these for you. We paid for them. And this is us giving you a Christmas. So it's not, it. I mean, charity is awesome. People need to feel like they're the dignity of doing it this way. Do you agree? I absolutely agree, 100%. That's the word I always come back to is dignity mm -hmm. because uh, poverty is an extremely complicated issue mm -hmm. for many families. Uh, but th to me, the word dignity provides a filter always for me of how to engage. Uh, and it's realizing that, I can never control another person's life, but I'm responsible to engage with people in really healthy ways and to show them that they have dignity and to empower them. And that's always my filter. I always tell people, to me, there's so many, uh, there's so many needs out there. There's so many different ways to view poverty and, and the work that charities and nonprofits and churches do. Uh, it, it, it can feel overwhelming, but uh, the filter is, to me, are we... Are we showing, teaching, and affirming dignity in the families we work with? Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter if you're trying to meet needs of food or laundry or Christmas or homelessness, whatever. Are we doing it in a way that is going to ultimately build a person up and show them the true image of God that they carry? 
Well, I love what you're doing because when you talk about uh, people just trying to get by, you throw Christmas on there, and then that can be the straw that breaks the camel's back. That can be overwhelming. Here's a way you are providing for families to do that and to do it in a very dignified manner. How many years have you been doing this, Corey? This will be our sixth year. Really? Of uh, affordable Christmas? Yeah. So you must have some great stories from past uh, experiences. Can you talk about what this has meant to families in our area? Yeah, I, you know, a lot of a lot of the values we have as an organization certainly come from my own story and experiences. But it never ceases to amaze me when I hear the stories of other families, uh, just how affirming it is that we're kind of on the right track in the way we're interacting with and treating families, and in, in that we're showing them respect and dignity. Because I can't tell you how many families in general have communicated to me. All I wanted to be able to do this year was with the money I went out and earned, uh, afford awesome gifts for my kids to have at Christmas. And furthermore, this has provided an opportunity for me to talk to my kids and to teach our family about the true meaning of Christmas and about generosity and about how to uh, help other people at Christmas time. So the fact that it's spurred in so many of the families we were even seeking to help, a desire in them to help others, kind of looping it back to the beginning of our conversation, uh, that blows my mind mm-hmm. that by providing that safe space for families where we're, we're treating them like people with respect and dignity, it gives them the strength and the ability to say, I want to do this for my own kids. I want to teach my own kids about this. Uh, there's one mom in particular who's volunteered and helped out with our store and and been a shopper throughout the years where uh, I think she has seven or eight kids, something crazy. I mean, I just have one puppy right now. I can't imagine (laughs) seven or eight kids. Uh, And she tells me every year the same stuff of how uh, it does so much more for their family than than gifts because we could debate uh, all day long about about the merit of the commercialism of Christmas and all that kind of stuff. But just the fact that she's able to say, uh, this is an opportunity for our kids to volunteer alongside me, for us to give back to the community. Yes, we get some cool gifts, but just to kind of tie it all together like that is really affirming that um, people don't want to just have their needs met. They want to find their place of belonging, and mm-hmm. they want to find their sense of purpose. And that may be the bigger value and the bigger thing that we are able to help families achieve. Mm. It's the nature of God to give, and it's one way we get to know a little bit more about his personality is is in the sharing of gifts with each other. I can justify a big, 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 big Christmas (laughs) because it's God's nature. He gives lavishly, and we get to know him better, and I I have no problem with – Awesome gifts at Christmas. Got no problem with that whatsoever. Um, But let's remind everybody, this is one day of shopping, and I think we're talking to many different groups here. We're talking to people who this will be an answer to prayer, saying, I didn't know how I was going to get through Christmas. I'm loving hearing about this. So for the shoppers, it's December 10th at the Martin Center, one day only. Yeah, and again, we uh, we kind of set ahead of time how many families we feel like we have the capacity to work with. And so when we're working with our partner organizations, uh, they refer kind of a piece of that puzzle to us. So um, we normally don't take walk-ins or anything like that, again, okay. because of the intentionality of we want to work alongside these organizations that are uh, connected to these families already. So uh, it is one day, though. We... Uh, surprise, to your surprise, many people's surprise maybe, we only go for about two and a half hours with this event. Wow. Um, because, and then everything's gone? Yeah. Well, no, <laughs> most everything. We we try to just be so well organized with yeah. it that uh, the families and volunteers are able to just kind of focus on their individual parts and uh, just have a good time. And any gifts that don't get sold at the store go to uh, Habitat for Humanity Perfect. of East Central Ohio. So. so how does a person get on the list so that they can participate if this is something that's really going to help them out this year? Yeah, I would say, uh, so, you know, the best thing is is getting in touch with our partner organizations. Um, Could you remind us, uh, list those again, uh, maybe a few of them? As I know there were some churches yeah, like First Friends Church, First mm-hmm. Christian Church. I know they're they're all kind of they're each kind of referring a few families. Um, uh, if somebody really wants to, they could contact us. Uh, I think it's important again to stress that uh, we do have all those spots kind of full right now, uh, accounted okay. for of okay. families that are shopping. 
But that's not to say that things don't happen or that we don't have spots that open up. So we try to be flexible, keep kind of a, a waiting list of families um, that we could contact in case a spot opens up. But at this point today, uh, all those spots are accounted for. So if Good somebody's in a situation where they're just like, hey, I know all the spots are full, but I'm super desperate. You know, there's there's no guarantee, but there's always that chance that a spot could open up kind of thing. But So we want to make sure that we're providing for all these people. Since you've already got your shoppers, we need to make sure that what they need is there. And, th- and that's what I try to stress is that, mm-hmm. you know, there is endless uh, need out there from families, if you will. We could sign... 500 families up to do this Uh, as of right now our goal is 80 so that limits us a little bit but you know what i tell people is uh when we're talking about the families and the number of families uh more resources we can help more families so uh the more we reach our fundraising goals the more we're able to get you know gifts donated uh just means that we have a greater potential to help more families So primarily, you're asking for funds so that the shoppers can go out and get what's on everyone's list. Or do you want, is there a place to go where people see a list and say, oh, I'd like to donate this or that? So we're going to have a few uh, local businesses that are going to, we're going to work with to serve as uh, locations where people can drop gifts off uh, from a public standpoint. Um, So we're still cementing that, but that will be out and about. Um, And then... Uh, there are, we use actually a, uh, like a, uh, wish list of, uh, cause we work with kids up to age 14 at this event. So we have a wish list of just general broad categories. Mm-hmm. Um, and then families, when they're registering through our partner organizations, they'll give us some of that feedback as well. And that list is on our website at christmasbycurrent.org. So if people want to figure out what kinds of brand new gifts, uh, that that need donated, um, you know, they can access all that information there. Perfect. Christmasbycurrent.org. The event in Canton, you want to click on the Canton event, is December 10th at the Martin Center. And, uh, Corey Easterday, we're going to have to have you come back and talk about the, the laundry project because we're all out of time. Sure. But that's also very cool, too. So uh, thank you so much for everything you're doing in our community. Yeah, my pleasure. Thanks for having me, Susie. And just quickly, if people want to find out more about everything our organization's doing, uh, currentofohio.org has all that information. Awesome. Thanks again. Thank you.